Hello and welcome to another body language video. Today we're going to be looking at Angelina Jolie and we're going to be using her as an example of confidence or, or, or less confidence and how that's translated into how a person uses their voice and how they use language. So specifically in this video we're going to be looking out for stuttering, voice speed, voice volume and also we're going to be looking at eye contact because we're going to be comparing two different videos of her. This is from 2011, this video, and we're going to be comparing it to an interview she gave in 1999. Um, Angelina Jolie is a great example of the things we're going to be looking at because not to mention her career, she's had a tremendous intellectual evolution as well with her UNHCR work and educating herself on different cultures and conflicts around the world and the huge amount of time she seems to put into helping other people um, and she's had she seems to have this huge evolution of confidence and, and self-assurance and it's shown very well in these two videos I think and I hope I put that across in the way in the way it should be because there's a huge transition she makes from 1999 to 2011 um, all right so I'm going to first of all I don't own both of these videos this video from 2011 is posted by Lynn JPS and the 1999 video is posted by Celeb Spot um, they are both quite long videos so I'm going to show you five minutes from each of them so you can get a good kind of feel for what they're both about and a feel for Angelina Jolie's personality and, and demeanor in both of them and see how she's changed so I won't interrupt It'll be 10 minutes of non-interrupted Angelina Jolie. And then we will have a detailed look at voice speed, volume, eye contact, and stuttering. So here we go. Here's the first one. I am very, very pleased to have her on this program. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very, very happy to be here. I watch uh, you show all the time. Oh, thank you. I, I didn't know that you lived in New York. I didn't know uh, you lived in New York. I'll be here. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was just saying before it started rolling. I was I was trying to I was trying to tell him how I don't have friends here and I don't have anybody to go to dinner. So, <laughs> I love I love just I love watching your show. So. Oh, thank you. Um, Did you love the role of Lisa once you read that? Did you look I at did. that and say? I had. It's obviously a dream for an actress to have just so much to work with. But I've never played a character I didn't. It's tough because she's like a bat. She's. She's apparently the bad person or the person that should be, you know, corralled. But I I didn't feel she was in many ways. And I felt for her, and I, which I've never been able to play somebody I didn't feel was redeemable somehow. I had read the book like five years ago, and I picked it up after I read the script, and I underlined everything I said. I was obsessed with, with her, her brutal honesty and her just need to, to live and... Uh, so, yeah, I got, I just, it's a funny tattoo that I got right after, right after this, that my mom came with me. This Thanks, is, Mom. This is one of several, is it not? Yes, <laughs> but, but this one was with Mom, so it was just the greatest thing in the world. But it was a, it's a, a prayer for the wild that heart kept in cages. Yeah. It's Tennessee Williams. It's, uh, it's, a, it's one of my brother's name. And they're, what, six in all? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And why do you, why do, you do this? Um... I don't have many on places you can see. Most of them are, are in the areas that, that you know, well, can't do nude scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, just just a few that are just reminders, you know, like these. Like Lisa was really pushing to me. It was hard. One time ago, I, I was so hard to let Gia go. I'm sorry. So I had to let Gia go. So I had to let Lisa go. And it was I, hard to let Gia go. I was hard to let a lot of them go because they were kind of, they became friends of mine. And they were parts of me. And, and I thought a long time ago that it was kind of exercising parts of me, just getting rid of them, working through them and growing up. And, and I realized that I'm going to keep them, and they're all part of me, and it's made me really happy. And I was, I just, I was missing this, I think. And, and then having this somehow with my mom and having this moment that I'll always remember with her, and I'm picking out and talking to her. She was in the tattoo parlor offering everybody drinks, so you could go get into the sand. Uh, you're close to her. Okay. Uh, have an influence on you doing what you do or not? Yeah, she uh, she stayed at Strasbourg. My my parents, my mom got married. To, met my dad when she was twenty. And she was, she was, she was, she was, we separated twenty five, and so she was. You know, my dad it was great. He, he, you know, they had an agreement that really he wanted her to be a mom, which is like not given enough credit for a really. Hard job, <laughs> and 
And that's, you know, she was, she was owned by she was my brother and my dad's. Uh, I was bred and bred, I was bred and never, never not my life. And, and but because she was an actor, he had to be was, away. Yeah, and so, and so she, and she tried to study after when we were little kids, but, and we always wanted to be an actress. Um, but never had the career she was raising. But she raised me in that kind of really furry way where she, she'd always, uh, she used to have this thing when I'd cry and she'd say, let me see yourself. So whenever I'm sad, I'm reaching out to everybody. And, See, I'm, you know, so and she, what do you sound? What are you thinking? What do you, what are you feeling? And so, but has being an actress been almost therapeutic then, and, and cathartic for you? Yeah. I mean, you I'm, can invest. You can both find parts of yourself through giving expression. I had I had done the bunk like before, before uh, before being interrupted, and and she's. She's so kind of reserved, and she's so kind of hot. She's somebody I, I admire. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't free, and she was obviously going after these people that had these impulses or the sinners or the bad people. And uh, she didn't know how to make people laugh in that sense of being about herself. And, and then I broke out of the degree with Lisa, who, you know, sociopaths usually become serial killers. That's just, just, and, it was so hard to discover that because I jumped into the thing I was hunting for some months and this completely on the side, but the, the, the other character, the, oh, the cop right, was right, playing, was right, hunting right, it, serial killer. Right, right. And so, so Lisa was, was this other, but was the exact opposite. And, and I so much was, I was questioning so much my life at that point, you know, what I was capable of. And, and Amelia allowed me to believe I was capable of things. And, I understood what love was. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop this video here because that's five minutes. And we're going to compare that to the 2011 one. Now, in this video, um, regarding stuttering, this video is from 1999. This video is only eight minutes long, but uh, Jolie stutters 35 times in total. She stutters most on the word she. She stutters eight times on the word she in this eight-minute video. She, studies, she stutters six times on the word I and she stutters five times on the word and. In this video, there is no stuttering. If you also um, pay attention to her voice speed in this video, she uses it to her advantage. She slows down and speeds up when, when it suits her argument, and she uses it to full effect. If you pay attention and compare the voice volume, in this video now she has a much more full-bodied voice. It's a lot more confident. It's, a le it's less whispery. If you also pay attention to her eye contact in this video, there's a lot more eye contact in this video at the, to the interviewer. In this video, her eyes are flitting around to the sides, up above, especially down below. Um, but in this one, there's a more direct, confident gaze. So I'm going to also play five minutes of this video to give you a feel of how the great change that's happened within that time. As the Hollywood lineage, the bee stung lips, the acting chops, the swoon inducing partner, and the kind of kids magazines pay eight figures to photograph. But Angelina Jolie is also an unflinching humanitarian, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. And that's where ABC's Christiane Amanpour founder found one of the most famous women in the world, taking another chance to deflect the fascination. Here now, the Nightline interview. Do you ever get to walk outside? What's funny is we're so clear now, if the cameras would leave, we may actually have a normal day. <laughs> Evangelina Jolie seems a bit giddy about an undisturbed Saturday morning in New York City. Well, it's understandable. After all, it's not often that she or her partner, Brad Pitt, get to step out of the limelight. I mean, you find ways, you know, and I think we're getting older, too. You know, we're getting to, we're, we're you know, we're mom and dad. We don't go clubbing. We don't do interesting things. We don't do, you know, so you start to Are feel like... Are you boring, like, mom and dad? Are you a boring couple? We're not boring, but we're... <laughs> But uh, we're private. Do you guys have date night? We do. We go. We go. Uh, we go on date night. Sometimes to you know, to a hotel, and we have our. But then first thing in the morning, we start talking about the kids and <laughs> rush home. The couple met on the set of their movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. There's nowhere I'd rather be. Right here, with you. One of more than 30 films Jolie has starred in, from blockbusters like the Lara Croft franchise. No, no. To no, her Academy no, Award winning portrayal of a psychiatric patient in Girl Interrupted. No, 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 Along the way, she's become the highest paid actress in Hollywood 
and one of the most famous women in the world. Angelina right here! But you won't even see Jolie in her latest movie. It's her debut as a director and a writer. The film, In the Land of Blood and Honey, is about the three and a half year war in Bosnia, in which 200,000 people were slaughtered. This was something in Europe. This was not, this was, you know, the worst uh, genocide since World War II in Europe. And what were we all doing? And did we do enough? And why do we not speak about this enough? And why don't I know enough about this? And so I wanted to learn, I felt a responsibility to learn. And she hired only local actors who had lived through the war and tried to tell their stories. <laughs> she even made two versions, one in English, one in Bosnian. This cast is my family, they're my friends now. And, and we had this journey together where I learned so much and I was so changed by, by them. It is so terrible, we should be exterminated. It's an unexpected and courageous choice for a first film. This is a war I know about, having covered the entire conflict and the genocide it unleashed on Europe. The international community estimates that Serbs may have systematically raped as many as 20,000 Muslim women as a weapon of war. Jolie unflinchingly depicts life in the camps where women were abused and raped. It is a controversial thing to do, to tackle the idea of camps, of ethnic cleansing, of women being raped as a tool of war, the different ethnicities. There's no safe way to tackle these subject matters, but I think the important thing is to discuss them and tackle them. Two of the actresses joined us to discuss the movie and the concerns in Bosnia about such sensitive material being written about by an outsider. In fact, Jolie kept her name off early versions of the script so that she could gauge reactions. Zana Marjanovic, the film star, remembers her first impression. I thought it was so, it was just so true, and I felt it was, you know, it had to be written by a Bosnian, because it was, it was just unbelievable. And this summer, Bosnia said thank you. <laughs> she was presented with a special award at the Sarajevo Film Festival to recognize the attention she's brought to the continuing impact of the conflict. Jolie sees her celebrity as a tool, a means to an end. I wouldn't have been able to get this film made if I didn't uh, you know, have, have the success I'd had. And, and uh, many situations around the world, I wouldn't be able to go uh, and do any of the work I've been doing for the last 10 years if I, couldn't, um, if I didn't have that. So I'm very grateful for it. I'm Angie. Whether visiting refugee camps in her role as Goodwill Ambassador for the United Nations or trying to help these children in Afghanistan, she's a tireless advocate who tells me that she finds this work more rewarding than acting. And it's taken her around the world, opening her eyes to conflict and the joy that can rise from the ashes of war. And that's five minutes of that video. Okay, so I hope you can see the very, the very two, two different demeanors that Angelina Jolie. She's evolved into this very confident person, obviously, with growing up and, and educating herself and exploring all these places. Um, so body language-wise, if we look at voice speed, um, she uses voice speed more effectively in this video to her advantage. For example, at two o four. This was something in Europe. This was not, this was, you know, the worst uh, genocide since World War II in Europe. And what were we all doing? And did we do enough? And why do we not speak about this enough? And why don't I know enough about this? So, and what were we all doing? And what, why don't we speak about this? So she's slowing down and she uses it very effectively, the speed of her voice. She also stutters on the word and in this video, but in the 2011 video, she uses the word and very um, effectively. She keeps repeating and to show how we, we should have had more action and how do we not know about this? How do we not, why do we not speak about this kind of thing? If you compare the speed of her voice and the confidence in the way she, at, at the speed of her voice there, to 4.44 here, where she's kind of rushing through it, um, perhaps out of nervousness. I had done the bone collector before, before, uh, before Girl Interrupted, and, and she's, 
She's so kind of reserved, and she's so from the heart. She's somebody I I admire. So before before uh, so she uses uh, and she says she's she's somebody I admire. So there's a lot more stuttering in this video, um, and kind of stumbling over her words. And obviously, you can see the expression here, a kind of unsure expression, one eyebrow up. Um, I, I I doubt she would have used a face expression like that in this video. If we turn to voice volume, we can have a look at 1999 again from 4:15. Just pay attention to her voice volume in this clip. Okay, where she, she'd always, uh, she used to have this thing when I'd cry and she'd say, let me see your soul. And I used to love this. So I had this kind of, whenever I'm sad, I'm reaching out to everybody. So in this, in that sentimental anecdote about how her mother used to say, let me see your soul, her voice was quite quiet. Um, and the line, let me see your soul, to emphasize it, she gets quieter. Um, and obviously in her face there's a lot of emotion when she says that because those five words mean a lot to her. Um, and arguably that makes it more powerful that she got quieter when she said that. Um, and also she's basically mumbling volume-wise at 7.50. Read my little scenes and came in and after begging and trying I can try to do. Is so as you can see, her voice kind of quietly trails off. She starts to mumble a bit, um, and that's not very—that's not the Angelina Jolie perhaps that we know today when she talks very confidently. Um, for example, in three twenty-six. Different ethnicities. There's no safe way to tackle these subject matters, but I think the important thing is to discuss them and tackle them. So I, I hope you can hear it, but in this, her voice is more full-bodied. Perhaps she's using her diaphragm a lot more, just being naturally more confident. If we look at eye contact, um, one clip that shows um, that she looks down a lot in this interview, more so than to the sides or up above or at the interviewer, she's looking down a great deal, for example, at 3.51. And uh, and that's you know she's she's done like she's raising my brother and my dad's I've always been there I've always been never never not in my life and, and but because he was in it so obviously she's talking about something sentimental nostalgic but uh, she's looking down and, and speaking to a person in front of her I did have this issue as well where I'd not make eye contact with somebody because I was afraid to look at them um, because obviously eye contact is something quite intimate and you do. They call it the window or the keyhole to the soul, and I think there's something to it because there is something very intimate about looking at somebody's eyes, and it can be quite, um, quite intense. So some people, like me, a couple of years ago, and perhaps like Angelina Jolie in 1999, um, our eyes tend to go everywhere else and occasionally go towards the person we're talking to because um, it could be quite intense looking at somebody. Um, okay, but also I wanted to quantify her eye movements. I wanted to count how many times she looks up, looks down, looks towards the speaker and see if there is really a difference between 1999 and 2011. So I came up with these graphs. Um, so every time she looked in a certain direction I counted that as one. Even if it was for a split second I had to quantify that because that counts as one. This is approximate because it's based on whether the camera is focusing on her or not. Um, and obviously I'm not a machine, so I do, I do glance and I, I, I look at it really hard and see, see what I can find. Um, I was just curious though, and this is 1999, Angelina Jolie, this is the video. So as you can see, most of, her, I'm, I, most of the time she's looking either, she's giving eye contact to the interviewer, or she's looking down. Um, looking down the most, obviously, and then up into the sides, not so much. But most of her eye, eye contact is downwards, um, and a little bit of it, oh well, comparatively second place is eye contact with the interviewer. If we compare that to 2011 you can see a significant amount of her eye of her gaze is eye contact with the interviewer and there's a, hu a stark contrast where she's not looking down nearly as much as 1999, hardly looking up, hardly looking to the sides. So as you can see if we compare both, both of them side by side on a pie chart the blue area is eye contact. So you can see on the right hand side that's 2011 so you can see there's a huge amount of increase in eye contact with the interviewer from 1999 to 2011 um, and the red area is looking down so as you can see on the left hand side the 1999 video 
um, it's 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 huge. And in 2011, there's a significant decrease. Um, so there you have it, Angelina Jolie, and an incredible evolution, in my opinion. Thanks for watching.